it's not an industry you'd think of as big business. But before COVID, music festivals were pouring almost $3 billion into the Australian economy every year and almost 10,000 jobs. Festivals and the entertainment industry are an ecosystem which is made up of suppliers, crew, venues, and all of these people employ lots of other people. That's a lot of money that we're bringing in. We are not minor events, we are major events. The iconic Byron Bay Festival Blues Fest was just weeks away when COVID hit and it had to be cancelled. By then, its organisers had already pumped millions into marketing, paid musicians deposits, booked suppliers and sold tickets to 30,000 punters. Luckily, they had event cancellation insurance with what turned out to be an important extra. We actually ticked the communicable disease box and we kept it. And as it turned out, it was a godsend for us. It cost a bit more, but COVID was covered. All it meant was that our, our ticket buyers were insured. And so it, it didn't cover our profit, it didn't cover our creditors. It just covered the fact that our ticket buyers would receive their money back. Most promoters weren't that lucky. In 2020, we were six weeks out when we had to cancel um, Groove Lamu and virtually everything was gone overnight. The multi-city festival tour for young revellers didn't have communicable disease coverage. There was a huge financial loss and emotional loss, to be honest. As borders open back up, major Australian promoters are pledging to get the show back on the road in 2021. But there's a massive sticking point. Unfortunately, now that COVID-19 is what we call a known risk, uh, all the insurance companies are actually excluding the communicable diseases and they're not allowing that exclusion to be bought out. Well, it comes back to what's a known event. So if there's a likelihood of, of, of a risk happening, uh, the insurance companies will tend to steer away from it. Uh, they're a business like any other business. They're in it to make a profit. Major insurer Lloyd's forecast the global payout for all COVID claims will reach more than $140 billion. The Insurance Council of Australia doesn't know the sum total of cancellation payouts to major events here, but in a statement it confirmed that insurers that previously provided limited diseases coverage to event organisers have recently begun to change policies to exclude pandemics and other infectious diseases. It's just an uninsurable exposure. Uh, if the promoters are going to run events, they're going to have to look at non-insurance ways of protecting that exposure. It's a huge risk. If there's a cluster and you're closed down in your area immediately prior to your event and you can't get insurance, then how do you deal with that? Nobody wants to spend $10 million to find that on the day they can't open their gates. And we've all been through that once. We don't want to be through it twice. Major festival promoters are now so spooked that they're lobbying the federal government to set up an insurance scheme for them, just as it has for the film industry during COVID. And there's another precedent. After September 11, the Howard government set up a scheme for property developers who couldn't get coverage for terror events. We would expect, therefore, the government to strongly consider supporting us in coming back for all the jobs we create, for all the financial turnover that we create. The federal government says it has grant money available to music festivals, but the promoters say they don't need grants, they need a safety net. We can't have two years of not trading. That's, that's something that is just, oh, I just can't imagine who will be left. Just revellers, but nobody to stage the events.